three lightning talk. <laughs> so that's cool. That's cool. So this is uh, everyone else is like super professional and like prepared, and uh, I have my notes. So you know, that's that's also my slides. I hope you can see it, right? Like, okay. Um, this is I'm bringing a little bit of the usual Singapore CSS culture to the to the to the to the really nice, very well organized event today. So okay. So thanks for the intro, Chris. Um, this is me in really small font. It's like normal size now, right? Okay. Okay. Anyway, so I'm on Twitter. I'm on GitHub, GitLab. I'm more of a programmer. I'm not really like a designer. So if you see colors, it's probably by accident. Um, I'll be talking about how not to use fonts and why it's better. Uh, so ooh, that didn't go well. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, like I, I do a lot of front end development, but for the last, I don't know, like maybe year plus now, it's been a, a sort of a very deep dive into HTTP2, and I've built this little page explaining a little bit with hype and buzzwords and things, how I'm doing all kinds of technical things around HTTP2, the new protocol, how to make it better for front-end development, which is my background. Uh, I'm actually building a sort of packaging tools, bundlers, uh, and now my recent work is more on a CDN. They can actually deploy um, very easily your static websites um, and all kinds of other things are related to that. So if you're interested in network protocols, uh, and all of the new, new possibilities with HTTP2, let me know after, after this very brief lightning talk. So um, kind of what I wanted to talk about is this little snippet. And uh, I was supposed to talk about this like maybe a year ago when I actually quoted it and, and showed it to Hui Ching. I never got around to it I, for, for one reason or another. So if it's a little bit outdated, um, my apologies. But I might, it might still be of some use to some people. So. Basically, it's a pony fill that brings uh, a new generic font family. Uh, font families are things like, like um, what's it called, like uh, sans serif and serif, right? The, the very like built-in uh, fam font family names. Um, so there's a new one called System UI, um, and I've made a pony fill for that. And what's a pony fill? Um, it's you're probably familiar with the term polyfill if you've done any front-end development in the last like n years. Um, basically. The problem with polyfills is that they tend to overwrite behavior that's already existing in the browser, or it tries to patch over things and it ends up breaking things maybe later down, down the road. Uh, a pony fill is, um, it's, it's, a, it's very pure, like, pony, like ponies or something. So <laughs> it, it's, it's, the point is that, um, that ponies or whatever, they're pure, like, like pure functions are pure, and that they have no side effects. And sorry if I'm going a little bit CS on you now, and not CSS, uh huh. Then, <laughs> so basically, there's no side effects. As in, you don't break anything by just having it in your code base. You only affect the input that you give it, right? So in the, in the context of CSS, what does that mean? That means that you, you give it a little piece of CSS code, and you apply it to something, and you're guaranteed that it won't break anything else. So that's sort of how I tried to code this in CSS. Um, normally, you see pony fills now in JavaScript a lot, uh, where they implement like, certain new APIs without sort of setting global variables in the browser, for instance. Um, but anyway. So like I mentioned, it's, it's system UI, something like a sans serif. Um, so what's wrong with sans serif, right? I mean, it shouldn't be the same thing. Um, the problem with sans serif is now that it sort of maps in almost all browsers on all platforms, on all devices, to like really older fonts, like Arial and uh, Helvetica. And I'm not going to start like a font war here. But there's certain things that can be done to improve fonts today on um, newer devices like re high DPI retina screens and stuff like that. So it would be difficult to introduce that and replace the current behavior because it would pretty much break the web. Right? A lot of websites are going to suddenly look slightly different or very different and over time like, keep changing. And it's very difficult. Like, it's just something that, that you can't really introduce new, new technology onto the web if you're going to break anything. So don't break the web is sort of a good principle. Um, so this new property, System UI, introduces a very desirable property which is that you always render on the latest font, whereas sans serif sort of renders on a more of a, like a, a, a known default that's, a, that, that's been around for ages. Uh, syst system UI is going to render text in whatever is the native font on that particular uh, device, platform, browser, whatever. Right? And that will continue to change as time goes on. Like, you know how for, for, for Mac OS, like every time there's like, a, a new name, there's also a new font that goes with it, named after some place in California or whatever. Right? And it's always like slightly tweaked and whatever. And you can kind of see the difference. So let me just zoom in on some 
arbitrary text. Pull up the old inspector. Up, up. Okay, so you can so pay attention to this paragraph that talks about Helvetica and watch me butcher it. So I don't know, can you see this thing here? Yeah, I can zoom that. Perfect. So if we set this to font family serif, you know, it's, it looks like that. It's slightly changed. It doesn't matter. Before it was like some annoying web font. Don't use that. So if you now change it to system UI, it slightly changed. I don't know if it's, it's subtle. Let me toggle it a few times. Oh, oh amazing, right? It's like a world of difference. I don't know. So, so it's not supposed to be a massive mega change. It's not going to suddenly change it into like Comic Sans or something. It's, it's, it's just going to give you always the latest, slightly better version of every font out there on every single platform for free. So you don't need to like deploy any web fonts. It's not going to be a performance hit on your load time. It's just a free change that you get. Now, the th this is a relatively new thing. So is this supported everywhere? Well. Like I said, this talk is about a year old. Well, it's never been a talk. This is the first time I'm just making up stuff about it. Um, but I, I coded up this thing when I, saw, when I saw it like a year ago. And at the time, it was slightly less supported. Now it seems like it sort of works in the browsers I care about. Um, <laughs> just saying that how it is. Um, so again, you might be able to just get, out, get, get away with, it, with just using it. Um, but uh, it, it could still be somewhat relevant to have a little bit of a backup. And so I'll just walk you through a little bit of how this actually works. Like, what, it, what is this pony fill all about, right? So ignore the epic story of comments. Now, essentially, this is done using um, this guy right here. This, uh, this, this root. Anyone know what that is? It's sort of like a weird selector. Uh, basically means like the HTML element. So like anything within the document this thing, this thing is going to apply to. And you'll see that a lot in either like regular HTML for like the HTML or when you're working with uh, Shadow DOM and web components and stuff like that, you come across this very, very often. Um, and then within that, this dash dash system UI. So dash dash, dash, dash means it's a CSS variable. Uh, I'm declaring a variable called system UI so that I can reuse it later. Um, now, I'm sort of set, I'm setting up a stack of fonts here. So a font stack is basically all kinds of um, local fonts that are, avail that are available on my system without having to make network calls. And I'm doing that so that I can sort of hit a desirable target on pretty much every platform. Uh, and it takes, a, it takes quite a lot of trial and effort, and you need to like, get a lot of devices running to figure out which ones are good. Um, I've basically done a couple of my own here, and then falling back to some of the default built-ins. So this system stack emoji and system UI, these are the ones that, well, the system UI is a built-in one. Uh, here, system stack sans serif. That, that's the one I've also defined here. So it falls back all the way to sans serif. So in the worst case, if your browser is like from the 1980s, then you'll get sans serif. Um, but otherwise, you get some of these guys. So I'm declaring font families, uh, as you can do. Like when you import like a web font, you can actually give it any name. It doesn't have to be the name that Google Web Fonts gives you. Right? Just put whatever you want there. So I'm just defining one as a stack for emoji, blah, 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 and a stack for the system UI thing that I'm, that I'm trying to come up with. And then I did a lot of sort of investigative journalism to figure out for every single platform and whatever, what are the actual fonts and what are they called in the browser itself. And so that's not always very obvious, but you know, you spend enough time on Stack Overflow and you come up with a list that looks something like this. Um, so essentially for every browser, every platform in the last 10 years, you'll get a pretty good looking uh, sans serif font that will kind of look like the system default font. So this mimics the behavior of, of, of a system UI without having support for it in the browser. And I'm just defining it as a font family. So whenever I use this font family, this stack sans serif, um, I'll be getting a, the system UI font essentially on almost every device out there. And this is pretty, pretty cool. So of course there was bugs, right? Um, with emoji, you know, which we can't have any bugs with, of course. It's the most important feature. Now, specifically to solve this, I did the same exercise. But this time, to figure out what are all the emoji fonts called on all, the, all, all platforms. And I made another stack. And so for pretty much every device out there, you get the perfect emoji font, which is pretty, which is pretty weird for Linux. There's like so many. And they all, they, they all don't really work very well. And it's weird. But I don't know. Again, for the devices I care about, it works. <laughs> Your mileage may vary. Um, so the nice thing about it, I, I can define this Unicode range to just sort of 
apply these fonts to only these ranges of characters. So Unicode is like there's like a there's like a code for every single you know symbol out there, uh, and so I can set like ranges of these codes and then say like font go here for these ranges only. But everything else will fall through to whatever was there. So now I can combine my two stacks, one the emoji and one for my sans serif. I can combine them into this upper guy here, the system UI, and that way it falls through, right? So if, if it's in the range of the emoji, it'll use the emoji font, and if it's not in the range of emoji, it'll use the system UI font, which is kind of a nice way to stack stacks in CSS with the proper fallbacks and all that. And then finally, there's this, uh, this way of like, how do you then use that? So you could, you could uh, figure out your own way to do this. You can just copy paste that top snippet all over the place, um, or with this sort of experimental thing that has in the meanwhile been discontinued, sorry. Um, but something like this exists in every preprocessor that I know of, so you're probably using such things and you could probably mimic this behavior with your tool of choice. Um, you can then take this snippet and automatically apply it to you know, any kind of selector that you, that you have to style your element with the proper emoji and uh, system UI fonts uh, and all of the niceties that come with it. So, yeah, that was my snippet. Um, this is something else. Yeah. Okay, that was my lightning talk. Five minutes over, sorry.